Why, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Mr. Dogboat 33 and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, the new order as to human. In the last video, we're just about getting the uh, Luftwaffe, or we're just about able to uh, get the uh, bombing runs to end. Just got a little extra progress left to go before we uh, wipe them out, but we'll get there soon enough, I think. Your Goon in Levant, very interesting. Hmm. And they have cores on all of this. Interest, also interesting. Uh, we'll see how well it goes for uh, for them. Uh, yeah. Anyhow, we could read the Kazakhs. I might actually give that a shot. Here. There we go. <clears throat> well, Tsar Kaganovic was frustrated. The German bombing schedule, which had remained relatively consistent for years, had changed. It was not a large change. In truth, things would not be too difficult to adjust and continue on the course they had been up to at this point. Out on his desk sat a proposal, a proposal put forward by Mikhail to adjust the urban defenses in order to make up for the change. On the one hand, simply continuing construction of bunkers wouldn't make any changes in the schedule moot. On the other hand, adapting a new schedule for defense of the above-ground infrastructure would be better in the short term for the people and morale in general. No matter what option was chosen, it would be a huge investment. The bunkers would provide a complete defense against the bombs, and if the bombing ever ended, they would be useful defending the infrastructure against the other warlords of Russia. But at the same time, keeping the defenses flexible would allow for a quicker response to the changes in the bombings. Indeed, both ideas had their promises. But only one could be followed. In the end, which one was it? It doesn't look like it matters that much. I'll take the political power. There. And the clock is broken. Well, with the end of effective aerial bombardment of our nation, we're free to rebuild the People's Republic. Our survival programs are no longer needed and shall be discarded. An uncharacteristic silence has overtaken the lands of the former People's Republic. Distant. Thumps and booms are no longer commonplace. The air raid sirens have not screamed their eerie warning calls for weeks. An area plane has been spotted in the sky for some time. The air bomb campaign so that have terrorized Russia for so long have finally come to an end. Now that the bombs have been stopped, we must make up for lost time. There are many problems that will need to be addressed, the most pressing which being the rebuilding of a nation. After all, the revolution cannot even hope to be continue until we are truly back on our feet. Okay, so we have army stuff. Which could work. Um, marching stuff. And rebuilding a nation. I'm trying to figure out which one we should go for. Um, I think I want to start working on knocking... I'm getting working on knocking down a poverty. So let's start on rebuilding a nation to start things off on. We also need to improve our admin efficiency, so let's get to it. Our long economic, on a long period under siege, has severely damaged our economic and political institutions. We were brought to the brink of extinction, but now that we are safe to, at last from the bombings, the time has come to put begin putting the state back together. Chairman Kaganovic has wisely put together a plan to repair our damaged factories, take go the government out of a state of emergency, and reestablish our bureaucracy, reaching out to the people of Timon and bringing them back into the fold after their struggle for survival. Soon the Communist Party will have firmly pulled our state back from the brink, and the hard work of expansion can finally begin. Beautiful. Ooh. 
so it looks like we have uh, 270 days to do as much as we can on these, and then the smoota will pop up. I think we'll rush down in this. Meanwhile, we can go ahead and do some stuff and get external investments. I think that's the way to start off on here. Can prepare for a raid. Just like you guys can prepare for, for today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. No. No, this video is not sponsored by Raid. That would be very funny if it was, though, I gotta say. Yeah. So you guys all have to be over here. Okay. That's a little annoying, but... Yelena Karbysheva sat down at her t kitchen table full of newspapers. She thought about how to schedule her day. She would have to stop by the grocery, pick up some food, do her laundry, and prepare for the tax man coming by tomorrow. She was pretty sure she had enough saved, but never to double check to make sure. She was thinking about all these things as she opened up her morning paper to the front page, only to see her father's face plaster all over it. Below it, she read the words, Death of a Black Marsha. Marshal. Russia rejoices. All at once, dozens of emotions bombard her. Rage at her father for banning everything for, to leave for Omsk. Pain at what her father had become. Sorrow for not having seen her father before he died. A rush of memories flooded her head as her emotions overtook her. From the last time she had seen him in Tiumen before he left to head south, to earlier when he just returned from the Great Patriotic War, a broken man. To those long nights she had spent in her younger years worrying for her father as he fought abroad. She tried to calm herself as she had thought, back all the way to before the war, before either war. It had been the summertime, and she couldn't have been more than 12 years old. Tatiana had been four, and Alexei was still a baby. It had been a warm summer, and they had left to enjoy a picnic in the countryside. She remembered her mother laughing as Alexei fussed with his food. Even her father had been smiling. It was the last time they had been happy together as a family. The anger and anguish threatening to boil over inside were settled to a simmer, as a memory calmed her. The shaping... Shaking stopped, and she slowly opened her eyes to gaze upon the paper once more. A single tear fell down her cheek as she stared into the eyes of her father and the paper. I hope you found peace in the end, dear father. Alright, we'll wait till these guys are more properly over to commence the raid. focus. Let's work on rebuilding the communes. The destruction of the WSPR's infrastructure for the war will require the tireless effort of the entire population. Rapid industrialization and the style of Joseph Stalin's plans would certainly improve the situation on that front, but our small slice of the USSR might not be ready for such sweeping changes. Agricultural reform and support for civilians are necessary to ensure that further development does not backfire and immiserate the population. Newer, bigger collective farms, widespread distribution of agricultural machinery, massive housing construction drives, the Communist Party will meet all the people's demands and more, and the benefits to industry down the line will be fruitful indeed. With time, the bombed out villages returned to some semblance of normalcy. Although several of the stronger men had been killed in the attack, the survivors did their best to repair the damage, even rendering a few of the destroyed buildings inhabitable again. Most accepted, it is essentially a natural disaster, unavoidable and with no reason to blame. Only Maxime, who predicted Luvwafa would come and tried in vain to procure air defenses, held on to his anger. He would sit on his porch around the time of the day of the bombs had first come, drunkenly reminiscing over his failure and the government's refusal to step in. When so much, when the government sent repair workers came, out of the blue, and after so much time without any acknowledgement of the village's plight, the initial reaction was of confusion relief and offense. Months of parties' negligence had inexplicably given way to a very belated offer of necessary aid. The workers were courteous enough, and most of the villagers appreciated their work ethic. Even as the rap village rapidly returned to its former self, Maxime took their presence rather differently. <laughs> you betrayed us! He shouted whenever they came by. You left us to die. And now you expect us to be grateful? We could have fixed up by ourselves. But you had to take even that dignity from us. 
if he were quite as resentful as he was, but nobody can deny that it, he had a point. The fact was that the party had failed the people it was meant to safeguard, and it would take more than this to heal the scars that left in the community. There's a long and challenging road to forgiveness. Oh, look at that. Good on you, Kazakhstan. Uh, how are we doing on everything, really? Uh, everything's coming along pretty well. We'll probably work on uh, tools coming up, I think. Or in, uh, expertise, rather. be able to do much in the way of looting. Get some air doctrines going. Um, superiority. We'll go for our superiority, I guess. An ultimatum. Yeah, no. building the communes. Next we can get working on Let's do force farming. Go down with land distribution. Let's finish this off the bat. Burgeoning industrial development causes a corresponding increase in the population, which in turn requires significantly more food. This is a straightforward this is straightforward, but there is one problem. West Siberia is far from being Russia's breadbasket. Agricultural production has never been this region's specialty, but it's hard to imagine a future path for the Republic if it does not increase significantly. We need to make sure we make every use inch of land we use of every inch of land we possess. Sorry, grain quotas will go up, leaving one's fields idle would be prohibited. The peasantry may protest, but they will be compensated appropriately in the end. The task of feeding the country is one of the most noble ones out there. Tight man. Let's get industrial expertise going. I must admit, Comrade Khrushchev, the repair job of this facility is most impressive. Chairman Kaganovic and Khrushchev arrived at the tractor plant in Chile Bansk only 30 minutes ago, but they had bit both been engrossed in its workings. They are most impressed by how fast it had been repaired, as it had been completely destroyed three months prior. Yes, Chairman Kaganovic, it is impressive. The sacrifices of the working man were not in vain. Kaganovic nodded and not work continued walking down the aisles. Below them, men on assembly lines did their part in the well-oiled industrial machinery, barely even noticing the men a dozen or so feet above them. One day... This will all be factories. Our industry, raped by the Germans, will be rebuilt and expanded. This is true, Chairman Kionvik, but it will be a difficult path. Both for us and the proletariat, sacrifices will be made. Nay, Comrade Khrushchev, sacrifices must be made. It will be difficult, but only through sweat and toil can the scars of Germany be healed. Khrushchev did not respond. He simply nodded and continued, following Kionvik through the facility. A decision I am willing to make. Go train those new workers. Um, let's go ahead and focus on research. Get that boost for research labs. And we are now officially. Oh, good job, UK. Now we are officially working on decreasing our poverty. 
Oh, very nicely, I gotta say. Hello, guys. Don't move against me, you go. Uh oh. No, we probably should have just yielded. Garrison slaughtered. Fuck. That's not very, very cool. Let's do some land redistribution to make up for it. There are a number of peasants willing to contribute to our nascent agricultural development, but they are unable to work with, unable to without any land to work. The uneven distribution of rural land hampers our goals and leads to great suffering among the pe landless peasantry. As with many social problems, this responsibility falls to the Communist Party to rectify. Collective farming, a policy of stalling segments of the Bolshevik opposition shot down by Bukharin's government, is a key to overcoming our ills. The state will manage farms worked on by all the peasants in an area, allowing for modernization and efficient administration on a vast scale. The landless peasants will know justice and more food will flow to the cities than ever before. Still have a little bit of liquid reserves going for us, which is nice. Land redistribution will be done soon. Next, what will we want to go for? Schools? Yeah, let's go for schools next. Next, let's go communal loyalty. The state can direct the creative powers of its citizens to do stunning feats. However, it cannot do everything. With the government's attention focused on heavy industry and collective agricultural it will be unable to meet every concern of the communes. In such times, the people must take matters into their own hands. Propaganda encouraging self-sufficiency and cooperation between citizens is the first step towards molding a spirit of revolutionary sacrifice. People should be taught that every contribution towards the collective well-being, whether it be building wells, teaching their compatriots literacy, organizing work, or any number of other tasks. A social state cannot work together until the people learn to work together in all ways. That works. I think, um, well, there goes the pseudo crisis. A man falls faster, typically, I'd imagine. Uh, laws of gravity versus the laws of, uh, economics. Uh, does it, this is going to start going down, I believe. Um, that's going to hurt us more than anything, I think. Ooh. Get those oriented. There's just a collapse in um, authority in Madagascar. I haven't really paid attention to too much of the new stuff yet, so that's interesting. Let's break up the unit. Uh-oh. Marxist theory tells us that the nuclear family will wither away the abolish with the abolition of private property as communal institutions rise to take its place. While they've placed effort into reforming family relations in the past, there's always room for, to revolutionize things further. The family unit itself must be the Communist Party's next target. Delegating the responsibility of child rearing to the whole community will give parents the freedom for work or leisure. Values of collective solidarity are easier to instill when family barriers that separate children are broken down. With the size and resources of our military, it may be a good idea to give it some role in these new crèches. There we go. Um, next up... Let's go with 58 kits. And then, do I want to work on some infrastructure? We've got mostly okay infrastructure. Kurgan could use some uh, help. Um, might wait to get industrial investments. I don't know. Let's get the new research slot figure filled out. 
Um, let's work on school construction. Back to uh, tube computing done. Let's get transistor computing after that. And let's work on repopulation programs. History has not been kind to the Russians. War and want have left a great hole in the demographic structure where millions and millions of people should be. When prospects were so dire, who could not blame the suffering women of a nation for not wanting to bring children to such a world? Now that things are better, we have to run into a different problem. There's simply not enough people for our future economic goals. We are first and foremost a party of labor, and there's no noble la nobler labor than motherhood. Subsidies for mothers and single mothers and families award are those mother heroines who bravely raise ten or more children. And controls on abortion will bring us back to where we need to be in terms of population. One of the most significant aspects of our repopulation program was the establishment of the so-called Revolutionary Crèches, a network of civil organizations dedicated to the rearing and caring of children. These crèches under the raffle eye of the party have also integrated a number of different education programs for both the children and the women who tend to them, creating a nest of future ideologues and Soviet zealots. However, questions have been raised regarding the specific administration of the crèches. Their rapid success has caused them a number of interest groups to lobby for control over them, with many seeking the crèches of the path to success and importance in the future. Ultimately, Kaganovic and his closest advisors have convened to decide a way forward and announce who will have the ultimate control over these children, child-rearing organizations. After what seemed to be hours of deliberation, the group has narrowed the candidacy for control over the crèches down to two potential prospects, the local communes and the military. Local communes, if they had control over crèches, would ensure that children would be raised within their own communities, and being so not only a sense of community importance and familial unity, but also receive a fair, the fair necessary civilian education that should be available to every young man. On the other hand, if the military was control of crèches, it would end up much more centralized, growing up with a greater sense of identity than to their own community. On top of this, of course, the military would be interested, just as we would be, in raising a future generation of soldiers, raised literally from birth, to fight and die for the Union. So late night grew late, as the night grew late, Kaganovic's advisory council weighed with bated breath on his final decision. I'll take this to Bali. Let each commune decide within a reason. And speaking of reason, I think it's reasonable for me to go ahead and end this part here. Thanks always for watching, gang. Like, if you like, dislike, if you didn't, leave any comments, if you react down in the comment section below. I read all comments again. Appreciate any of you back my ad for me. Check my various links as well. Twitch, Patreon, all that fun stuff. Hit the sub button the notification bell for both weekdays as well as occasionally Saturdays. That's it for now, my friends. I thank you all for watching. My name is Mr. Dogbo333, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.